Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Greater of Bethel. Good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, again, we thank you all that are tuning in. We thank you for uh, fellowship and worshiping with us on this morning via uh, Facebook Live. And we are excited about another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. It's not that we've done anything so good, not that we've done anything so great, but only by the grace and mercy of God have we been afforded this opportunity to uh, be in this place one more time and being able to connect with one another, to uplift and magnify the name of the Lord. Listen, since you're here, since you're tuning in, since you're already in the worship mindset that you might as well just go on and praise the Lord. Think about everything that he's done for you. Think about how he's opened doors. Think about how he's made the road straight. Think about how he blessed you in spite of it. When you get those thoughts in your head and in your mind, you can't do nothing but help to uplift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for all that you've done for me. Amen. Again, thank you again to all that are tuning in. We hope and pray that this service can be a blessing to you, that it may equip you and help you in your daily walk, that you may have a closer walk with him. Amen. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you just for this another opportunity, oh God, to be able to uplift and magnify your name. God, right now, how we thank you just for looking beyond our thoughts, supplying us with our needs. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, God, that you just decided that you sent your son that we may have life and have it more abundantly. God, we can't say thank you enough for everything that you've done. Now, God, we pray that you would forgive us for all the forgiven sins, that you would clean us up, renew within us the right spirit, create within us a clean heart. Oh, God, that we can truly serve you. Now, God, we pray a special blessing over every household that's represented, every household that's tuning in, God. Whatever the devil has the desire to do, we claim the victory over him right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you just have thine own way like only you can. God, we thank you. Again, we bless your name on today and be in this place that we can truly feel your presence. It's in the mighty, precious name of Jesus we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Listen, we're going to go higher in the Lord. We're going to keep climbing uh, due to circumstances. That's all right. Uh, our praise team wasn't able to be here, but we still have rams in the bush. We still have an opportunity to praise God. We still have the ability to uplift and magnify the name of the Lord. And because of that, we ought to give him some praise. We ought to, we ought to be able to say, listen, praise is what I do. Every time I want to be close to you, every time I want to move in the right direction, every time I feel like I need to do some things, every time feel like I need to have a closer walk with you. Listen, I realize that I can pray. I realize that I can call on you, but one of the best things that I can do is praise you whenever I can. Praise you and uplift your name. Praise you as though you've already done whatever it is that I'm asking you to do. And that is what we can do. And that's what we will always do. So Again, I said there was a ram in the bush, and guess what? I guess I am that ram. But that's all right. That's all right. I, I, I'm, I'm willing. I'm ready. I'm able. And because God put breath in my body, because he gave me my right frame of mind, because he gave me the activities of my limb, guess what? I might as well praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, uh, I believe it goes a little bit like this. Praise is what I do. When I want to be close to you, I'll give my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him. 
Amen. Amen. God has blessed us to be here once again. I have been out for some time. But God is still in the healing business. Yes, sir. God is still in the miracle business. God is still making a way out of the way. Yes, I'm going to say that I feel pretty good. Pretty good. Amen. And I know that there's going to be days when I'm going to feel even better. And with your prayers, I know I can make it. I want to thank you for all your prayers, your love gifts, all that you did to share with me uh, while I was out. Uh, your prayers, your self. Uh, God is still God and God all by himself. Yeah. Amen. And I just thank God for uh, Pastor uh, Miller and Pastor Wright and all those who have kept on keeping on yeah. in uh, my absence. Uh, man told me, please, man, I say, if you hold a position here in this church family, you need to be here because we've got to get this right. Amen. We can't have do this, we've got to get this right. Amen. Because uh, we don't want to open up only to have to close back down uh, because of violations. Amen. So please be here. That way, uh, Usher, you will have your instruction. Uh, ministry leaders, you will have your instruction um, of what has to take place and what has to happen so that we operate within the guidelines that set forth. Uh, for uh, the situation that we're in. Amen. Just a few words I want to share with you. David said, uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley yeah. of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Listen to what David said. Yea, though. In other words, I'm not there now, but there's a possibility that I'll have to walk through the very shadow of death. And as we look at what's taking place, thousands of lost their lives, and according to estimates, before this is over, millions will have lost their lives. And yet, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, because I know the Lord is with me. His rod is staff that they comfort me. The Lord prepared the table in the presence of my enemy. I, I'm not saying I'm too good, but since this outbreak, I have not had to get in line to get one box of food. God has provided. God has made a way. God has put money in the bank. God has fixed the problem. Even though the world is rocking and reeling, amen, I'm being rocked in the arms of the Lord. And I, and I thank God uh, for that, amen. I'm not going to be here before you. I'm just so happy uh, to be here, uh, amen. Whatever right he got here, through the years, keep on talking. Amen. Trying to do the last of
God has a praise team here. It's called the Magnetics. I don't think I've met a Magnetic yet that couldn't sing. <laughs> Now see what he means this morning. I can't wait to see until we see everybody back. Let me tell you one thing. God has his day. We just want to listen to his guidance and order our steps in his word. Amen. We're going to go right here into the word of God right now. But before we do so, Let's lift our hearts to heaven for an added word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege to be in the house of the Lord once again. Somebody asked, where is the house of the Lord? It's wherever Jesus is. And he's everywhere. And so, Lord, we invite you into the homes, into the buildings, even the bedrooms, of those who are tuned in. And now, Lord, we just want you to speak, Lord. Speak as your servants for listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to speak on the subject this morning when disaster comes to town. When disaster comes to town. And I like to read St. John chapter 11 and the first seven verses. And it goes something like this. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus from Bethany, yeah. the town of Mary and a sister of Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother, Lazarus, was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Yeah. And Jesus heard that he said, This sickness is not of the devil, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. When he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still mm -hmm. in the same place where he was. And after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. I want to talk today about our lives how we deal with crisis when it comes into our lives. Whether it's a natural disaster, or like a tornado, hurricane, whether it's a health yeah. problem like COVID-19, whether it's a relationship disaster like a broken marriage, whatever the disaster is, how we respond to it <laughs> makes all the difference in the world. 2 Corinthians, tells, Corinthians tells us that God is the God of all comfort. That he has the power and the will to see us through any kind of disaster that may come our way. The bottom line is, what I'm trying to say this morning is, when the going gets tough, the tough get God. Now, I don't mean that we need God when there's a problem or a crisis in our lives. We need God every day and every hour of our lives. What I'm saying is that when we learn to trust in him day by day, when disaster comes, we have a shelter in the storm. God uses no one in a mighty way until he's taken them through the storm. Yes. Somebody said, the greater your mission, the greater your storm. Yes. We have better had a relationship with the God of heaven uh, that will shield us and protect us 
and deliver us through any storm. God can do that. You know that. Sometimes the Lord will ride out the storm with us. Yeah. Other times the Lord will just calm the storm. But most of all, he calms the storm inside of us in the deepest and the most part of our soul. So when the going gets tough, my Lord, the tough get going. This morning we're going to look at the story of two sisters, Mary and Martha. And I want us to look at how they rolled the storm and figure out some lessons we can learn from them. And there are five things that we need to remember about that crisis. We find this story in John chapter 11. Jesus was very close friends to that family. Well, one day Lazarus got sick and immediately the, the family members, the sisters, sent word to Jesus. But Jesus did not come to Lazarus immediately. By the time he arrived in Bethany, Bethany, Lazarus was dead and had been in the tomb for four days. Yeah. Martha and Mary are distraught. They are devastated. And they are grieving and they ask Jesus, Lord, why did you come? Had you been here, been there, our brother would not have died. And they're right. They're right about that. You know why? Because when Jesus is in the sick room, we get well. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Because in the presence of the life giver, death doesn't stand a chance. Right. Yes. The devil may throw his darts, but they won't work. Because right. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Before they, he was dead. Jesus did not arrive when they thought he should have. Well. But he told them. Sister, I'm saying this to you, brothers and sisters. This is not the end. No, no. I'm so glad this morning that this virus that's going on right now is not the end. No, no. It is not over until God says it's over. No. And when God gets ready, he's going to end this thing. Yes, sir. And get us ready for the next crisis. And hopefully, we'll be stronger when that comes around. Yes, Amen. Yes. God said, it ain't over. And Jesus goes directly to the tomb, prays to the Father, and Lazarus got up, Aretha Franklin said, walking like a natural man. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's consider these five things we talked about, these five lessons that we can learn from that crisis. Number one. First lesson we can learn is that prayer must be a priority. In other words, it must be primary. First thing the sisters did was they sent word to Jesus, saying unto him, The one whom thou lovest is sick. When a crisis hits in our lives, whether it's death, whether it's out of a job, whether it's a Relationship breakdown, breakdown. Whatever it is, the first thing we need to do is send word to Jesus. Amen. And when we're driven to our knees, that is a perfect position to get a prayer through. You see, God, my Lord, He does broken things, broken soil to produce crop. Broken clouds to give rain. Broken grain to give bread. Broken bread to give strength. A broken heart to bring us to his side. Over time, God will break our independent spirit, our rebelliousness, and draw us closer to him. Amen? Somebody said, and I know it's a fact, prayer changes things. Hmm? Yes, it does. Let me just talk about prayer a little bit. Rick Warren said, the more you pray, the less you panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. All right. Martin Luther said, I have so much to do that I must begin the day with at least three hours of prayer. 
To be a Christian without prayer, Martin Luther went on to say, is not having breath and being alive. Prayer is not asking. Prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our, depth of our hearts. When we communicate with the creator and sovereign of the universe, things happen. Why? Because we're calling on the greatest power in the world, and that's God. He spoke the world into existence. He brought people back from the dead. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The greatest power is right at, at our disposal, and we have to use that power. Whisper a prayer to him. Tell him what you want. And God will come through every time. Yes, he will. Yeah. But sometimes we don't have enough faith. Why do you say that, preacher? Why do you say that? We don't have enough faith in that power because we try everything else. And then we call on the Lord. We even tell the Lord that, Lord, I've tried everything. Well, God should be our first, our first priority, not our second. That's the first thing we need to do. Amen? Fall on our knees. Yes. Now the sisters could send word to Jesus because they knew him well. They had a friendship. They had a relationship with the Lord. Now had they known, not known Jesus, they would have had nowhere to turn. If anybody you know, if anybody listening to me right now, looking at me, or if you're without Jesus and don't know him as your Lord and Savior, if you have not become a child of God, it's plain and simple you don't know the Lord. So when disaster hits you, you'll be without his help. Right. Of a creek without a parent. You'll be between a rock and a heart. Because you have nowhere to go. Yeah. The God is around the world. Right now. World leaders are in a rock. In a hard place. You see. They need policies to limit the spread of the virus. Yet they need also policies to reboost their economies and open up businesses. But the two demands don't mix. They're incompatible. And neither one can be fulfilled unless one is taken care of. And he said, by time. Let me tell you one thing. We can change that by talking to Jesus. That's what he's for. We need to pray in church. Amen. The church can decide which way this thing goes. If we talk to the Lord, we can turn this country around. God's people, God, can do it. You've done it before. You can do it again. And friends, if we do that, lean on the Lord. You'll never be alone again. Second point we can learn from this, this crisis is this. Emotions are natural. Hmm? One of the worst temptations that we can fall into as men is uh, I gotta be strong through this storm. I've had folks at funerals but I got to be strong for the family. I remember I feel like I told folks, you don't need to be strong for the family. It's time for God to be strong for you. Huh? Let me tell you one thing, friend. Ain't nothing wrong with being weak. Songwriter said, I am weak, but thou art strong. Just a closer walk with thee. Amen. We live in a Samuel L. Jackson, then Denzel Washington, the Rock, Tom Cruise era, where we live in a testosterone society where it says men don't cry, women do. Well, that could not be further from the truth. Let me tell you about a man who had muscle. He was a carpenter. They, back in those days, they had to go down in the valley to saw logs and carry them on their shoulders. And Bring him to the shop and saw him some more. And that man's name was Jesus. Don't you fall for that weak Jesus. He had muscles. He was a carpenter. 
And the Bible says, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Did he weep for Lazarus? Of course not. He knew in a few minutes, Lazarus would be back to life. Yeah. He wept because he felt the pain and sorrow of Mary and Martha and he wept with them. Yeah. He wept because he saw the big picture. He saw the ravages of sin affecting people's lives in the future. And he was sad. And he wept. Yes, he did. God has made us emotional people. So when a crisis comes, if you feel like it, you need to let it out. Because if you don't, when you hold it in, it will turn on you. you end up being depressed and all, all kind of ailments and sick. Because you're holding that stuff in, pretending nothing is wrong. It's okay to cry. It's okay. Are y'all with me? To question God. It's okay to say, God, I do not understand why. Lord, I don't understand what you're trying to do in my life. I don't understand. And if you go into the crisis, friend, realize that prayer is a priority and that it's all right to express your emotions. Third lesson. We can learn from this drama, trauma of Mary and Martha is this. Perseverance pays off. Do you think Jesus stayed where he was two more days because he didn't care about Lazarus? He loved that man. He cared a lot about him. He stayed, he stayed where he was because he knew that God was in control of the situation. And at the right time, God will take care of that thing. And when crisis invades our lives, friends of mine, we just want it right now. We want this thing to end right now. We're bored. Yeah. We get back to work. But you know, what we must realize, if we think about it, life is about waiting. Huh? Waiting in line at the mark, the airport, and the doctor's office. Huh? Waiting for the mail to be delivered. Waiting for someone to love. Waiting for the check to come. Waiting for a job. A thousand different ways of waiting. But like impatient children, we don't want to wait for a little bit, we a little while. And when we pray fervently, we expect God to answer that thing right now. At least I wish you would. But first thing to keep foremost in our minds is that our human timing, are you with me? Is not in sync with God's timing. God has his own timetable, and when God gets ready, he's going to move. When he gets ready. When he gets ready, he's going to end this thing. We just wait for another. Amen? There was a preacher who told the story one time. He said, one of his greatest fears was the haunted house. He said, he was a teenager. He went into the haunted house. He said he was scared. But in that haunted house, they had several exits called the chicken exits. In case you got scared, you could check it out here, check it out there. He said he took the first chicken exit and got out of there. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is my point? As Christians, when it comes to a crisis, we look for the chicken exit. We want this trial to get get through as fast as possible with the least amount of pain. But you know what Betty Davis said? Betty Wright said, huh? No pain. No gain. Oh, my Lord, I love that song at one time. No gain. <laughs> Am I right, Pastor? No gain. You probably not talk about that crown you're going to get with that cross. You better look for that cross, amen? After all, Romans 5 does tell us that in the crisis, we rejoice in our suffering. 
Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Sometimes the only way out of a stone is to ride it out. When I talk to young pastors, I do a lot of workshops all over America at one time. Uh, we aren't going anywhere right now. And I talk to these young, to these young preachers say, you better listen to the old, old preachers. Because that's one thing they have you don't have. What is that? They have learned how to ride storms. Get them to over. Yeah. If you're young, you might panic. And get scared and want to quit. You have to learn how to ride storms. Yeah. And sometimes we have to ride the stone. And sometimes God will calm the stone. But in most of the time, God will give us peace during the storm. Amen? Inner peace. There is no crisis too big for God. Now, friends, the fourth point I want to make is that God uses a crisis for his glory. Hmm? He didn't cause Lazarus to die, but he used that thing uh, to bring glory to God. You see, God can take a broken plan. He can take our sinful mistakes and turn that thing around and still God would get glory out of it. Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. He helps us with the temptation to blame God. It helps us to realize that God doesn't bring disaster. It helps us to realize he loves us and to take our defeats, turn them into victory. Yeah. Another last point I want to make is this. The final lesson is that God changes lives through Christ. Look at John eleven forty five. 45. It says, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and have seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Sometimes in life is the one that's going through crisis that's yeah. Other times it's those around the suffering person. But most of the time it's both. Think about it. the lives that will change that day. Of course, Mary and Martha will change. Hmm? Yeah, they will change. Lazarus was changed. He probably had a bunch of stories to tell on the bench as they sat around and talked. And the people around them, the Jews, were changed. It said that many of the Jews came to Mary and seen these things believe on him. It's sad that it takes a crisis for God to get people's attention. It's sad. Went through all this stuff we're going through. Because God wants to get us to know him better. Yeah. You said today, I am the same person I was before the crisis. During the crisis and after the crisis. That's not true. There's no way in the world you can come to this thing and go through it and be the same. You don't go through the storm and come out the same. God has shaped and molded you into who you are today by taking you through a crisis. If you're a Christian, you've had not had any great disasters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here. Wait a while, baby, it's coming. Disaster is coming! <laughs> but it's not the problem, it's how you deal with it. It's not the disaster, it's who's with you during the storm. God has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. I just want to close. Very briefly, with one last scripture that took place when Jesus spoke to Martha, Martha and Mary. Know what he said to them? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead. Yes, shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me 
shall never, never die. Friend of mine, we have to trust in the Lord. You know why? Because if we trust in the Lord, we will get through this thing. With this gray sky ever bright, with this load ever light, we feel stuck, trapped, locked in, predestined for failure. Will we ever exit this pit? Out of the lion's mouth came Daniel. Well, out of the prison came Peter. Out of the whale's belly came John. Out of the lion's shadow came David. Out of the stone came the disciples. The disease came out of the lepers. Out of Thomas came doubt. Out of the grave came Lazarus. There's nothing. Well, there's nothing. Nothing. Nothing too hard for the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. 